Hi Tribe and welcome to this new video in which I will continue sharing different kind of drills that you can also implement in your training and today I want to show you how in tactical combat system we are using the stabbing attacks more than the cutting attacks and if we are using cutting or slashing it's basically combined with the stabbing attack and i will explain to you why it's happening this and what is the combat mindset behind this type of movements at the beginning i want again to underline that i promote the idea of a protector an individual that uses his skills to protect his own life his family and the ones around him the techniques that i'm showing you here are only for that situations in which is requiring use of deadly force. So taking out my blade already is a decision that I must make only when I am in this kind of situations. I'm not teaching these kind of techniques for the uh, moment, for the scenarios or the situations in which you are entering in a verbal a conflict with somebody and it's passing to some slaps or some punches and you take the knife out and you stab it because of course you will go to prison. I am again underlining that these techniques are for the situation in which I must use deadly force and I give you again scenarios. London some years ago terrorists in the metro entering with the knives. Paris terrorists in the church entering with a knife and kill multiple uh, uh, civilians. So only like an idea to make yourself an Im imagination exercise and to understand better that these techniques are for these specific situations in which you must use deadly force. I must eliminate and incapacitate the target as fast as I can. I'm not teaching here fencing with a knife one guy with a knife out, another with a guy knife out and, I don't know, uh, studying and applying different kind of uh, tactics. I am teaching ambush with a knife and counter ambush with a knife. So it's something else, it's something different. So understand from the beginning that the techniques that I'm showing you are applying deadly force. Another very important aspect that you must understand is that what I'm practicing here is not reality. These drills that I'm performing here are very easy to make because I'm in a relaxed environment and the same with you when you are practicing in your gym or in your, in your training place. My target is a training dummy and it's static. In reality, my aggressor will have unpredictable movements and it will oppose resistance and have his own attacks or multiple aggressors. But why I am performing this kind of drills? Because drills have the goal to help you program your brain to have a response in a real life or the situation. Or to achieve other kind of things, for example, increasing your speed, increasing your precision. So these drills are the fundamental techniques. So you can pass after you master this to the next level in which you come with different kind of scenarios. With partners that they are opposing resistance, that they are having their own movements with different kinds of situations and training in which you put pressure and stress factors. Only basis and then you must pass to the next level because otherwise it will not help you a lot if you only perform mechanical some movements. Yeah? If you don't come in the future 
with different kind of stress and pressure factor scenarios in which you have these elements together are coming together then the chances that you will be able to survive in a real violent attack that is uh, involving use of deadly force the chances are very low so understand this from the beginning i want also to remind you that tactical combat system the system that i'm teaching is not resuming only to blade to knife combat yeah it's involving fire weapon tactics tactical medicine trauma medicine again i repeat that it's not enough if you want to be a protector if you want to increase your skills so you can protect your own life and the ones around you you must have a lot of skills because it's not enough that i can eliminate the target with my fire weapon or with my blade if until i do that others around me they were injured like i don't know having massive bleeding or maybe my family members or even myself when i was uh, in the fight if i don't have after some basic knowledge about trauma medicine how to apply a tourniquet how to uh, apply a chest seal how to stop a massive bleeding and if i don't have neither the tools with me then what it was the idea that i eliminate the target it's if the others are dying near me or the ones uh, from my family or myself so it's a combination between many many skills basic skills but you must uh, have it yeah like tactical medicine blade combat fire weapons tactics of course if i would be in a situation and I am allowed by the laws of the country where I'm living to carry a fire weapon. Of course, the number one weapon of choice is remaining the fire weapon. This is the reason why I'm training myself and I'm teaching also with tactics with fire weapons. But the blade is coming also in the discussion and especially when we talk about countries where civilians are not allowed to carry fire weapon, maybe the blade is remaining the only option that they have so this is the reason why we must understand that to become a skillful protector you must have different kind of knowledge in different domains coming back to the topic of today's video uh, i want to make you understand the importance of identifying the right techniques that you must implement in your training guys because if you are repeating, again, I, I uh, remind you this, if you are repeating mechanically something that you see in a video or what the instructor is showing you, but you don't ask why you are doing that kind of movements or what is happening when you strike that particular areas, then you have an issue because it's possible that you repeat uh, continuously and program your brain to perform a technique and maybe that technique it will not help you or maybe to represent even a obstacle so this is the main element that you must uh, follow you must know how to identify the right techniques and how you can make this by understanding how your body is functioning by understanding how will respond the, ta the target's body when i am hitting with the blade and perform different kind of strikes. We have different kind of systems that they are using and teaching blade combat. And I don't want to criticize no system. Yeah? I only want to say my own opinion, how I view the things and how I train and teach my students what kind of drills to perform and how to choose and identify the right techniques. So in various systems, we have two main kind of attacks. One is performing by stabbing, by trusting with the blade. So I have my blade and one is to trust. I'm stabbing with my blade, even if it's a direct stab, even if it's a circular stab from down to up, laterally, it's by trusting by stabbing with my blade, inserting the blade in the target's body. And the other one is by cutting, by slashing. So by cutting means that the sharp edge of the blade must enter in contact with the body and I perform different kind of cuts. 
This can be also made in a normal grip, hammer grip or modified with the thumb up. So I perform different kind of slashes or it can be performed in a reverse grip, yeah, slashing. I can also slash in this manner. The step in the same, I can perform it in the hammer grip or modified with the thumb up, trusting, entering, stabbing with the blade inside the target, but I can perform it also in a reverse grip, like an ice pick grip, stabbing, entering in the target. Okay, of course, I want to remind you that when you are having a thumb, with the thumb on the blade grip, you must understand that if your knife has like, for example, this tsuba, this guard, and you put the thumb finger here, like I said to you many times, and you will trust if you will step with power, with a lot of power, and you hit the hard tissue of the body, bones, ribs, I don't know, it's possible that your thumb finger will break. This is the reason why when you do powerful strikes, you must have the normal hammer grip. This with the thumb here, I'm also using it, but I use it more when I want a preci precision strike. Because in a normal, again I repeat, if I want to step straight, my blade is oriented like this because of the my anatomy, because of the uh, wrist that is not permitting more. But if I put the finger, the thumb finger, then I can push the blade and I can have better precision if I want to strike something. So, we understand that we can perform the both, the, the stabbing attack and also the cutting attack, having two kinds of grips. But now we are entering in the main discussion, trying to understand what are the vulnerabilities, the, the strong points and the weak points of each of these attack. And I tell you from the beginning that in tactical combat system, we are performing stabbing attacks. That sometimes are combining with slashes. And I will show you immediately uh, in the next moments what I want to say by this. The fastest way from point A to point B, it's a straight line. So. Me being here in this position and wanted to strike my target in the neck, in the eye, the fastest way in which I can reach that is in a straight line. I'm going in a straight line from me to the target. Straight line means that I trust with the blade. When I'm making the a straight line means that my tip of the knife, it's going and it must enter, stab, penetrate the target. So we understand that stabbing with a knife, it's a straight line, it's a straight pattern. Of course, I can stab with a knife also in a circular way. How I was saying to you, if I want to strike like this, it's a circle. I am stabbing, but I am having another kind of movement, the same if I want to strike from down to up, if you look at the pattern, it's not the same like this or this. So, we understand that we can deliver a step in a direct manner, but also in a circular way. But the main part of this thing is to identify that the straight line is what we need. So if I will be in a real situation, I need to eliminate, to incapacitate the target as fast as I can. So reaching that target as fast as I can is from point A to point B, meaning that I must do a straight strike. This is a very strong uh, point that the stab is receiving. Because if we discuss about cuts, a cut, it's a circular movement. The majority are circular movement. Okay, I can do it also in the line. I'm with a blade and come from this point to this point and cutting with the blade. But I'm referring reaching my target. If I want to come from this point 
to this point like this first I must go in a straight line to put my to perform with the knife to be with the knife in the position that I can perform after a cut but the majority of the cuts are simple movements flows that you are doing with your blade and many many systems that they are practicing with the knife they are having these flow movements and a circular movement it will take much time to arrive to the target if I want to make this it will take much time then if I make this doesn't matter how fast I'm making it will never be much faster than a straight line so if we are passing now to the next discussion that is regarding the human body anatomy we will be able to understand much better how important is the stabbing technique on the body again i repeat we have different kind of zones that we can cut or stab and after this the target will lose the life only that some of the targets are shock strikes meaning that when you are stabbing when you are hitting will create that shock that will stop in that moment from the initial action the target and others will lead to death after a limited amount of time depending on the zone and again i give you the example if i'm cutting the carotid artery the femoral artery the axillary artery the subclavian artery the branchial artery and so on blood vessels that are requiring the movement of cutting it will lead to that the victim that the target is losing the life but not in that moment after a limited amount of time the victim will lose the conscience and after a few minutes three four minutes it will lose the life because he's losing so much blood again we come back to the discussion of arteries i remind you in the arteries the blood is circulated with high pressure so after it's lacerating one uh, artery uh, the target will lose very fast the amount of blood that is leading to be unconscious or to lose the life so it's leading to that but is not stopping in that moment and i need if i am in this kind of situations in which i need to use uh, deadly force i need to eliminate or incapacitate the target in that moment so cuts cannot give shock to the target Okay, can somebody again, I repeat, stop after the uh, carotid artery is severed or the femoral artery? Of course, if it's aware of what is happening and because of fear and other, he can stop and try to put his hands to block the, uh, to stop the bleeding and so on. But you don't have a guarantee because this individual can be, again, I repeat, under the influences of different kinds of substances of be or because of the adrenaline, he will continue his action. He will not stop there. In the, re in the opposite direction, we have some shock zone on the body that we can access it only by trusting with the blade. Trachea, we penetrate with the blade. I was explaining to you so much times you reverse grip or how you want we are penetrating the trachea we are putting the blade inserting the blade in the pipe imagine again i repeat only taking a strike in your trachea what is your effect what is happening with your body how you are modifying how it's hurting imagine now a blade inserted in the trachea what is happening the same another shock zone eye insert the blade in the eye game over there another place heart insert the blade take the blade out not let that because if it's blocking between the ribs if you don't have this um, anatomical knowledge and you have a very wide blade and you don't know how to puncture it and if it's blocking between the ribs and it's remaining in the heart it will function as a seal so many victims from real cases were surviving because the blade was blocked between the ribs and it was remaining with the tip in the heart and it was functioning as a seal yeah if you are stabbing and then take it out then it will uh, it will have lower chances to survive than if the blade is remaining there other shock points kidneys the same two millions three millions nerves that they are in the kidneys uh, imagine the kind of pain that you have when a blade it's 
uh, striking your kidneys. So these are shock strikes. So I will be able by striking with my blade in the trachea or in the eye or in the other zones to stop the target in that moment from his initial attack. And that is what this that is my goal. I don't need if I am in a real situation in which I must protect the ones around me, my family or the ones near me. I don't need to dance with the blade. I don't need to cut the tendons, to cut the muscle, to cut the blood vessels and to not kill the target. Because my goal is to eliminate the target. Because these techniques I am applying only in that moment in which I want to protect the ones around me and the only way is by using this blade and I was giving you uh, at the beginning some scenarios happen from reality in the church with terrorists with the knife in the metro and so on to make yourself an idea so I don't need to dance with the blade maybe it's looking nice maybe I create a lot of damages on the muscle and it's looking very bad the wounds but they are not stopping him there but if I am here and I'm using my blade and I'm throwing my blade, striking at the level of the trachea, giving that shock and then enter on the lateral between the, inter, between the ribs, intercostal spaces, between the rib 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, penetrating, thrusting intercostal space with a good length of the blade, I can also strike the heart, so I have two kinds of strikes, one is here, it's already, this effect is going on the neck because of that blade that is trusting the trachea, then when I am moving in diagonal or when I want, I can come also in the lateral, entering with my blade, stabbing that heart. So this I need, I need as fast as I can to be precise and give a shock strike that it will eliminate or incapacitate the target. So what we understand until now, <clears throat> that stabbing techniques are much faster. So I reach my target faster with a direct stab technique, not with a circular one, because I can make also these kind of movements. But in these kind of movements, I require more movement of my body, more movement from my hand, and it's taking more long, even if still it's staying fast, it cannot be more faster than a direct strike. So we understand that a direct step is faster than a circular movement and we understand also that shock points on the body can be aimed, can be accessed by stabbing techniques. It's easy to stab the eye, it's easy to stab the trachea. No, of course no. It's, it's regarding Again, how much time you are investing in your training? What kind of training you are doing? Because in reality, to hit here, it's very simple. My target is fixed target. But in reality, my target will move, will have unpredictable movements. So if I want to stab that trachea, only this movement, it will lead in another kind of strikes that it will not be, uh, it will not create shock. The same with the eye. This is the reason why we are training, why I'm showing you all these kind of exercises that you can make with a tennis ball, attach with a rope, move it, move continuously, try to step, try to step from different kind of positions, not only in standing in this position, step, try to step from sitting position, from different kind of work, workwards position, because in reality, when it's something it will happen, you will not be in a fighting stanza. You can be in your, at the bar, at the restaurant, I don't know, on the bench, sitting, many, many, many kind of situations. So learning and increasing your precision, it's a very important element if you want to have a chance in a real situation. Again, it's not enough only to do this. I must after come with different kind of elements and pressure stress factors so I am increasing and coming more close to reality. What is happening, again I repeat, in reality? Because of the adrenaline, many changes are happening in your body. Heartbeats are increasing, respiration is increasing, the sweating of the palms, the blood is redirected to big groups 
of muscles, tunnel vision, you lose the fine motor skills. You cannot operate at the same level with your fingers because the gross motor skills are taking uh, place, uh, are in charge in that moment. So all these things, you cannot make any more complex activities with your brain. So we must, after we learn the basic, again I repeat, to implement in our training different kind of stress and pressure factors that are simulating this kind of things and what we can do increasing your heartbeats and your respiration before you are doing your drills make physical effort push-ups pull-ups running different kind of exercises until your heartbeats are very very high your respiration is very very high then try to perform your technique it's something else fine motor skills are not operating at the same level take a bucket with water and ice put your fingers inside let it there a few minutes until your fingers you are moving it like this and then operate fast your blade now imagine if you have a folding knife that is not uh, uh, automatical maybe it's manual and even if it's automatical imagine the movement when you have this to take it from your pocket to be able to deploy it very fast and then use it that is time this is the reason why you must understand fixed blades are fixed blades. Fixed blades are not having malfunction. A folding knife, you can take it from your pocket, push the button and not exit in that moment, not open or something else happen. Again, you are requiring fine motor skills. So a lot, a lot of things that you must understand and test in your training under different kind of uh, pressure factors in such a way that you can increase your chances of surviving in uh, this kind of situations again meteorological factors if i'm training all the time here and it's warm i repeat this all the time but i want to understand everyone that to understand how important are these elements if i'm training all the time here and it's warm and i perform my drill so fast and i'm so good and then i go tomorrow i have a folding knife and tomorrow i go in a zone or tomorrow it's winter it's cold outside and my fingers are moving like this and then i must deploy very fast my weapon it will be something else because i never train in these kind of conditions so understanding these elements will help you identify the right techniques and the right way in which you must train so coming back to our discussion straight step very fast, the fastest way to reach from point A to point B. Other important thing to activate, to reach the shock zones, we need striking, stabbing techniques. So two main elements that are showing us that stabbing techniques are the ones that we must implement in our training. This means that we must not put cutting techniques. No, I was not saying this. I'm saying only that the main idea when I'm talking about combat and why I'm practicing with my blade for combat is to be able to incapacitate, to eliminate the target as fast as I can so all it will be over. If I, I don't know, I lose myself in complex movements in I don't know what drills, techniques, it will be more hard and the chances that I will succeed are less. So I need simple, efficient, brutal technique. So here, of course, I want to tell you that in tactical combat system, I am combining also the slash movement, the cut movement with the thrusting one, but not in separate movements. So I'm not making something like this. I don't know, different kind of cuts. I am combining the slash, the cut with the blade after I'm trusting with the blade. Because the majority, the majority of the zones that I want to access are not so simple, neither in that, uh, in the normal uh, activity of cutting to access. For example, if I'm talking about the carotid artery, if I want to cut a carotid artery, like in the movies or in, like in the majority of systems that they are making cuts with the blade, it's not so easy. I have so many friends, professional uh, chirurgs and medics that they are working on this kind of situations and 
I was talking with them and I'm studying this aspect from the human body anatomy and guys, it's not so easy to cut a carotid artery only with one slash. You have this big protection muscle and maybe if you have a chirurgical scalpel and you put a lot of pressure, can happen. But these bodies offer also a little bit of protection. The same with the femoral artery. We have a very, very big muscle that is protecting the femoral artery. Okay. If you know some human body anatomy, you know that you can stab in the femoral triangle, access the, the femoral uh, artery and the femoral vein very easy without having something that protects their this. I was showing you in the past video. So even if we want to make a cut, it will not be so simple to access that vital area. And again, that vital area, when we speak about blood vessels, will not be a stopping uh, strike for the target in that moment. So he'll continue his activity. So I am combining my slashing techniques after I am giving a shock strike. So for example, I want to stab the trachea. I was showing you this technique in the past, but now I will explain it better. How is the movement? I stab the trachea, entering my blade in the trachea, in the pipe. And when I am inside, I am only twisting the angle of my wrist in such a, a way that the blade is coming like a hook and drag towards me. I am ripping the carotid artery and jugular vein. So there, yes, it's a slashing kind of technique. I am using the sharp edge of the blade to rip, to lacerate that important blood vessels. And in one, in one kind of strike, so I have one only changing the angle and then ripping towards me. And by making this in one strike, I can aim two targets. So I'm striking, I'm giving a shock strike and then twisting my blade inside towards me with the sharp edge and ripping, lacerating the blood vessels, the carotid artery and the jugular vein. And this I am doing in one movement, so I am one and dragging. So even if you are seeing that it's a direct movement, here when I am arriving and I am entering inside, I am twisting, I am making this angle from my wrist and then ripping towards me. So I have to go one. By doing this, I increase the damage to the target and I also targeting two vital points. One, a shock point that it will stab from the initial moment, from the initial attack there. And the second one, the blood vessels. I'm entering in that trachea, then of course I have the uh, carotid artery and then I'm severing, I am lacerating. So it's one, two. So I have a strike, a direct strike, a stab combined with the laceration. So if I'm here striking at the trachea, getting back the knife. It's hard, the movement, now I'm only entering inside and then when I take it out, I am twisting, twisting my blade in such a way that I, am, I can severe. So I'm thrusting and then twisting my blade towards me. So after I create this kind of damages, look here what cuts, yeah. So this, so deep, again I cut also the protection so deep strikes and here i have again the diagram with the carotid arteries with the red you have here left and right carotid arteries and jugular veins in the middle is the trachea the blade is inserted so this is the thrusting the stabbing technique but here it's showing uh, near the trachea but this is going directly to, towards inside the trachea the blade and after it's changing, if you see here, it's changing the angle. So when I'm entering in this position, like straight, then I'm changing the angle and rip towards me. So I can rip, I can severe these important blood vessels. So I combine in tactical combat system, the trusting, the stabbing technique that can deliver the shock with a slashing cutting technique yeah but in the same movement the same we are talking if you are thinking of the femoral artery 
femoral triangle where is not having the when they are not having the protection from the muscles. But also if I access it more down where it's uh, protected by the muscles, also in that region with this kind of movement, I can severe uh, that uh, femoral arteries, uh, femoral artery left or right. Um, I was showing you in the test that I was making with the animal tissue, how much damage the blade can create of doing this movement and it was this kind of movement. So even if I want to enter there, at the femoral artery, the same movement I am entering with the blade inside, thrusting, changing the angle and then ripping, slashing towards me. Yeah. Only that if I want to make this kind of strike, we must be careful because I was explaining in the last video, if you go directly to the femoral artery, you don't have a shock strike. So if I am going directly there, maybe I manage in that moment to thrust and to lacerate, but my target can do the same thing, can step, can grab, can do many things. This is the reason why if I want to do this movement, first I will deliver my strike shock, my step to the trachea or to the eye, and after receiving the shock, then I can go down, enter, how I was showing you last time in the video, enter the femoral artery and making this movement. Trusting inside, changing the angle, going back. If I am in a confined space, elevator or corner near me, then I can close, I can go with all my power entering inside. And when I am ripping, entering in that right I can also catch with my other hand and <coughs> ripping all inside the neck so I deliver more damage. So you must understand very good that we can combine the both slashing with the thrusting with the stabbing technique but we must have the first a shock strike. If I want to access the axillary artery is the same movement only that I will make it with a normal grip. I need a normal grip to perform this because uh, it's under, yeah, it's at the armpit, so I cannot perform. I can, I will show you one variant in which I can let my body and come with a strike from down up and ripping towards me, but it's more complicated. So in a normal way, if you imagine here is the armpit, axillary artery, I will show you also on the diagram, I am coming with a blade, thrusting from down up, entering inside the, uh, in the armpit and then the same movement I have a thrusting and then a ripping so I am coming towards me lacerating the uh, axillary artery and you have here another diagram in which I am showing you so you have here the uh, axillary artery and you come from down up thrusting inside and then facing with the blade towards the uh, f f towards the axillary artery, you rip the, you uh, severe that blood vessel, that artery. In which other techniques I can combine with the, not only the thrusting, but all, also the cutting. Basically, in the majority of them I can do this and it's recommended because you create more damage. If you remember, I was doing also the evisceration technique in which you thrusting, you enter, you stab with the knife, at the level of the belly and then you lacerate, you cut with a sharp edge in the lateral, opening the belly, exiting all the intestines out. Nobody can fight with the guts in his uh, hands. It's very, it's resemblance to the suicidal uh, uh, seppuku uh, technique from the samurai. Okay, again, is this a shock technique? No. This is the reason why if I want to do this, I must first combine it with the striking, giving a shock strike to the neck, then entering and performing this kind of technique. Is this required? It's a little bit of complicated technique that is taking more time. I only show you different kind of ways to not seeing only like this. But of course that in reality, all can finish here and it's over, yeah? But because I want that you understand that you can perform also other kind of attacks, but after you deliver a shock strike, this is the reason 
why I'm telling you all this. So in many attacks, you can implement also the cutting technique. This kind of techniques with the cutting, with the slashing, are looking nice, but I need something fast, precise, stopping, eliminating, incapacitating the target, and that is a thrust, a step. And you can start to implement this kind of movement in your drills. So when you are doing a strike now, don't make it only like this. I am taking my blade from my appendix position, just a moment, I have a look. Only like this, I am stabbing and creating space, only a step. Can be like this normally. I can only be in this position, deploying my blade, striking at the trachea, and it's over. Here, over. But I want to show you also how you can combine it, and for this reason, you must deploy your blade, enter inside, twisting the angle, coming back. Of course, at the beginning, it will be two kind of movements. One, two, three. But you must arrive in the position in which after practicing to be only one, to look only like one position, even or only like one movement. Even if I'm looking like making only a straight step, basically it's a straight step, but in the same movement after, I am coming back with the blade, redirecting the angle. So I'm entering inside, changing angle, ripping towards me. This is the reason that blades like this, that have this form, are much better for this kind of strikes that they are combining also the, the stabbing with the laceration, with the ripping. Uh, I'm not referring here to karambits, I'm referring to this kind of blades. Karambits are very, very curved. I'm referring to this kind of uh, blades. This is a kitchen knife, you remember it from my last videos, I was making some testing and you know what kind of damage is creating. But because of the form, when I am entering inside the neck, stabbing that trachea already because I'm only moving, putting pressure from my wrist a little bit, already I have the angle to rip the carotid artery and the jugular vein. So better shape, better design from for stabbing and ripping. Coming back to the main idea is that not having all the time the blade with you means that, for example, I give you a, only like an idea. I don't have the blade with me, but on my desk where I'm working, I have a scissor. So having this on my table can be used as a weapon. But first, you must have the combat mindset to identify that weapon, the combat mindset to be able to uh, transform, to switch your brain for a working tool to a, in a, a fighting tool, in a combat tool. And of course, practicing and training your brain to operate di different kind of tools that have the same characteristics with the knife. So of course we have here the knife and we talk here about trusting the levering shocking strikes and we talk about pointy objects. So what has the scissor has point it's a pointed object. It cannot cut but it's a pointed one. So here I have again animal tissue. It's very simple. It's only a scissor. You have a scissor you can deliver very fast, a strike that can penetrate. I'm giving in the lateral because here I have the animal tissue. This can be in the trachea, can be directly in the trachea because it's there. We are wanted to aim to create a shock. But I only want to show you, it's again skin, it's again fat, it's again muscle. How easy with a strike you can inflict a lot of damage. This can go directly in the eye in the same manner, yeah? But this means that in my training, I must operate my blade with trusting techniques. In, in my if in my training I am making slashing techniques, means that I am programming my brain to make this kind of movements. 
So when I will have different kind of objects like this, my brain will react in the same way that I was training. But only that this is not doing nothing if you are making slashing techniques. So I am entering, putting my thumb finger on the scissors up, exactly how I was showing you at the knife, creating this kind of force. And then of course, entering and stabbing at the level of the neck, exiting. Again, I'm repeating, I'm stabbing in lateral because here I have the uh, big portion of animal tissue. If I want to step, of course, if this, the target it was here, I was going directly to the trachea, inserting this, entering directly to the trachea. So if it was here, big, powerful strikes that they are penetrating the tissue. Imagine in your neck, in your trachea, is the same. But this means that I must train with trusting, with penetrating techniques. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed the content that I was creating for you and also that I was able to uh, share with you my combat mindset behind choosing the stabbing techniques. Also, slashing is very good, but when I am choosing to combine it with a trusting stabbing technique. So first I'm going for the shock zone and then I can combine it with a slashing, ripping different kind of blood vessels, for example, with the sharp edge. Thank you very much again for watching this video. Stay safe and of course train smart.